Hi and welcome to this Scarlet Thread tutorial on using the Central Engine uh, with the 2.0 editor. Originally I was going to create a bunch of tutorials that sort of mapped out and explained the game basics examples that come with the engine. However, I decided I really don't want to do that because um, I think there's better ways I can teach. The examples are there, you can follow them. However, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to get started explaining the basics of probably the most important thing or at least for me what I found to be the most important thing about a central engine and that is the game objects system well when you first start using a central engine you might wonder well what are the game objects and what are they for how do they work why would I use them well basically I'll start off by saying a central engine does not have a scripting language Yes, it's called a central script, but it's actually C++ with the precompiler. Um, and I think that's really amazing because I flipping hate scripting languages. So, what this game object stuff does is it sort of makes a script using C++. Therefore, you get all the advantage of C advantages of C++. Firstly, it's really fast. Secondly, um, you don't have this awkward interface between a scripting language and the coding language. It is the code still, so it can access everything in the code the same way without having to go through some awkward, weird, stupid interface. So, I think it's amazing, and I love how you can basically almost script into objects except using the full capabilities of C++. So how does that work? Well, <clears throat> let's have a look first at the game object class. Now, this is sort of the base class for any object that will be injected into the game or added into the world editor. So basically, it's a framework um, for any object in the game, whether that be a static prop, um, an animated character, a door that opens or closes. It should inherit from game object. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, but let's just go through this quickly. The most important things to note are these virtual functions. These functions need to be um, overwritten when you inherit from a game object to make your own object. So, for example, the most important ones are create. Um, create as well as, where are they? Update. Draw, prepare. And then a bunch of these other ones to set positions and matrices, etc, etc. So we're going to go and we're going to have a look at some of the game objects I've made and I'll explain how that all works. However, one last thing before I do that, I'd like to note that there are a lot of uh, already made um, game objects that Essential comes with that already inherit from, inherit from object. And that is, one of them is the static. And you can see there's all a bunch here. Static, kinematic, door, destructible, character, etc, etc, etc. Now you can choose to use these um, or you can choose to make your own and base your own off object. Or alternatively, you can just extend these. In some cases I've done this, in some case not, cases not. Um, so let's have a look. We have the static object. Now basically this is a... Um, object that will live in the world and it won't move. Um, so, you can see here it has some basic params for something such as that, like its scale, its mesh pointer, its material pointer, its physics pointer, and its actor. And you can see it's overwritten that create those position and matrix functions and update function, the draw, pair, and draw shadow functions from the object class. Now what happens is, the significance of these functions is, once an object is injected into the world update cycle, um, so you, when you update your world that you've loaded, um, these functions will automatically be called at the correct times. So your create function will automatically be called when that object is created. It, update will be called every time it needs to be updated, etc, etc, etc. Um, so that's basically how that works. Now let's have a look at some of the types of objects I have created myself. Um, let's start with triggers. 
He has an object that I have um, inherited directly from game obj. In the case of game obj, game obj doesn't actually do anything. It's just a framework, so you have to put in all the stuff yourself. Um, this is I wanted this for trigger because you don't actually see a trigger, so it can't be a static object. It's not a kinematic object etc 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 so you can see I've got all these functions the standard functions I've added some of my own I've got these position and matrix functions the memory address change function etc and what you often do is in your create function um, you the when it's created when you load a world this ob these object parameters will automatically be sent to this create function now where do these this, does this object parameters come from? Well, it comes from the object you place in the scene. Now, if you don't know what that means, I'll show you quickly. In the central editor, you can create objects. And I'm going to go to where I put all my objects in this in here. And I'll go to trigger. And you can right click, go new, and go object class. I'm not going to create a new one, but I was just showing you that. I'm going to delete that now remove that and now you can see I've got object trigger now now I can edit all the params for a trigger in this now I created this um, as custom and then I added these params myself so there's not many params for a trigger there's active which is a boolean you can set all these however you want add new parameters uh, its ID which is an integer and its uh, trigger relationship I won't bother you with what that does but um, it's basically an enumeration and now these parameters when I go to say um, put it a trigger so what I've done is I've made some objects for triggers just some primitive shapes so here's a box any any mesh object or or normal object so instead of a object class an actual object has a bunch of its own parameters and if you look up the top here here is the params tab. Now you can see all those parameters from the trigger have come up and that's not by default but because I went earlier and I went and clicked on this one and chose object trigger. When you make a new object class it'll automatically come in this list. I can choose to be something else and then I'll have to change all its um, settings. So that's that there and now what happens is if I go to my world Where's my world? All right, so I'm in my world here, and let's say I want to put a trigger, and now I can drag and drop that box in there. I can select it, and you can see I can further edit the stats in there. Now what will happen is because I've dragged and dropped it to, into my world, once I load this world into the game, this trigger will automatically um, be loaded with whatever parameters I put in here and then it'll be updated every frame etc etc as I've coded it in my trigger class which inherits from game obj. Alrighty -o. So now that we have seen that I shall make one and uh, make a new one.